yourself a little bit and what made you decide to run? Uh, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm John Polis. I'm right from Mayor West Lafayette. And uh, what made me decide to run was Mayor Sonia Marjoram, who is a very persuasive, very respected lady in the community. And um, when she presented the proposal to me, she hit two bit magic buttons. Uh, the one magic button was a serv idea of service. I've served my country for 25 years in the military. And uh, although I was serving in the community and on various nonprofits, uh, the Bach Corral, I uh, work with LUM, I'm an, an active in my church, the chance I had to serve the community in a larger sense was very appealing. And then the second button was the fact that I had the skills that she thought I needed uh, that, that were needed for, uh, for the position and uh, the idea of leadership. Of course, coming out of the military, I had 25 years of that training and experience. So just applying it to a different, different body of, of people. What do you see going on that needs to be changed? What, what? Well, there, there's two things. First, on the, on the idea of leadership, a different leadership style. I'm, I'm much more into the idea of a much hands-on, uh, direct uh, activity in, in, in leadership. Uh, it's okay to delegate and remain above the fray, but eventually, if you're going to do that, you must hold your, your, uh, your subordinates ruthlessly accountable. And um, you're better off delegating, but then getting involved yourself and being more active. You've got to lead from the front. You can't stand back and wait for things to happen. Then you're reacting, and I think you need much in the position of mayor, uh, especially in this city, with, with the relationships we have with the surrounding um, forces, we need to be more proactive. So I think that's one of the big things, is that mayor's office has just got to get much more involved early on. Uh, and then we need to develop a, a sound strategic plan, a long-range vision for what the city should be and could be. Um, once again, this idea of reacting and being proactive, having a, a developed concrete strategic plan is a proactive measure that allows things in as they do arise to mesh with the planning that that system driven too. I mean system driven uh, strategic plan instead of having no plan and then reacting to things that that do come up and the wing the wing building is a good example of that so. It's like, okay so do you believe the current administration is too hands off and doesn't have a plan? Is that yes I do. I, I call it kind of a caretaker mentality. They seem to be just you know uh, things have been accomplished. So many of those things were started under the, the previous uh, administration. And uh, you look around the city and, you know, Kmart site's finally being developed, but that was kind of reacted. I mean, didn't, there was no planning for that. It just kind of occurred. And, of course, it took four years for that to happen. The Smitty site's still empty. Uh, Champion Center site, still empty. Uh, there's just no, no there's seeming, seemingly no, no plan uh, in place to act as Guard, uh, guide rails for, for development plans that are coming about, uh, the Wayne Building and then, of course, the Porter Cribs project. So that's one of the big things I see. And the second big thing is, is this, uh, the whole idea of uh, city finances. Uh, it's, it's just not as transparent as uh, it seems to be. Uh, the current administration trumpets the idea of the general, general fund uh, increasing over the next number of years. But and most of that increase was due to transferring expenses from the general fund into the two cumulative funds, um, which is one way of, of increasing one fund at the expense of two others. And um, it's a way of keeping the, the, the books balanced, which you have to do. And perhaps down the road, I would do the same. But the point would be, I would have to show the citizens that it's necessary to do that. Before we start transferring uh, these extraneous expenses to, say, the wastewater treatment utility fund, we, I should, I should, should be very visible in um, the austerity measures for the general fund, the belt tightening aspect that, that I haven't seen. I've not seen that kind of belt tightening uh, in, that, in, in that budget process. And so that's, that transparency and budgeting has to be done. Uh, it should be done. And uh, you keep robbing Peter to pay Paul, someday Peter's going to want his, his money, and it's not going to be there. What's your strategic vision? Well, for a couple of visions, the, the, the real big vision is we need to have a very comprehensive uh, planning document for, for all West Lafayette. I know uh, New Chauncey area is working on a land use plan, plan themselves, but uh, first thing I would do is I'd have the uh, Area Planning Commission develop a comprehensive plan as they see it for, I call it the Northwest Commercial Corridor. Northwest 
avenue is going to be developed. I mean, it's, it's, it's just hard, right by Purdue, in the heart of the city, basically. So we need a, a comprehensive plan that's, that's beginning to, to, be, to be developed, say from Stadium up to, uh, to, uh, to Lindbergh and over to uh, Salisbury and Grant. A comprehensive plan that's generated by the APC and then given to the city to, to be worked with, uh, with a citizen uh, base group to, to develop a complete comprehensive plan for that commercial development. When you have uh, commercial interests owning the land that's along Northwestern, the key is how can we get those interests to also merge uh, their interests with the neighborhood interests that are right adjoining it. Uh, the, the key beauty of West Lafayette are our, our neighborhoods, these extant neighborhoods that abut the campus and provide uh, or should provide a very nice urban environment um, for for living right right next to the campus, and we need to protect those neighborhoods and and to enhance them. And uh, a comprehensive development plan, strategic plan, that would merge those two interests: the commercial interests, the development, that would also be along um, in concert with a development that would enhance and protect the neighborhoods. That's what's got to be done. It can't be either or, and it shouldn't be either or, and it, it can be done uh, um, concomitantly with one another. It, 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 right now you see the Wayne Building was proposed, and then, oh, how can we make this work with the neighborhood? And my feeling would have been that should have been done in advance, when the, when, the, when the planning was beginning to be started by, in this case, Purdue Research Foundation. The city should be involved right away, say, okay, how, what can we do now? You're going to do this, so how can we make this project blend with the community? With the, with the neighborhood, enhance the neighborhood, protect the neighborhood, and not have it the reverse of that. And if you remember how that project uh, uh, devolved, it took Councilman Bunder, Councilwoman Hunt, and a private citizen, Carl Griffin, to try to mediate something with PRF to get that Wang project to at least have some effort of blending with the neighborhood. Much too late. Uh, very little leverage at that point in time. And the city was not involved in that at all. Um, you obviously have years of experience in Community service and military. What challenges are you going to face as you, if you are elected, in, involved in you know government specifically with the mayor's office? I mean, like immediate concerns. I mean, I guess what kind of what kind of uh, challenges are you going to be facing? <coughs> yeah, by not uh, having that experience. Yeah, I think that well, the, the challenges that are inherent in, in that in, a, in, tra in changing a, a, a administration or a leadership is once again reestablishing the leadership and, and building a staff. Uh, when you in the military, you move from command to command. You take over command, uh, you have to put your imprint down, and also at the same time, gather the staff that's already in place. Because when they bring a new commander in, usually the staff's already there. Very few are a little turnover in the staff. So the new commander has to come in and give his imprint uh, and or her imprint, and then uh, orchestrate and build a staff uh, and make sure that you, the commander's will is understood by all and then uh, focused on, on the common good. That's the, the real big difference, I think, is that um, I want a staff that understands they're working not for me, they're working for the people. And I don't want a, a staff that's just going to pair it and yes answer to me. I need a staff that, that working, all of us working together to, uh, to, uh, to accomplish the, the overall mission for the, for the people. And making that change or making that mindset is going to be the biggest challenge. I don't think that mindset's there right now. And there's examples I can show, tell you about that I won't, where that mindset is not in place. And it's, it's just got to be changed. It, it's a cultural thing, and it's done through, uh, through strength of leadership. And that's going to be an immediate challenge. Um, and you mentioned um, kind of being more hands-on and a strategic vision. If you're elected, is there any other specific goals you would have for the first four years of your, uh, of your term that you'd like to see? Well, I mean, in general or specifics? Um, specifics. Specifics. Are, one thing I, that I worry about, and talking to some of the, uh, the people running, Eddie Van Bogart is a uh, first district councilman and ran for re-election. A uh, really smart young person in that millennial generation. And getting his viewpoints and his ideas, it's really startling you know, how that generation sees West Lafayette and sees how things are progressing. Um, Things are moving fast. It's a train that we have to get on uh, on board. Uh, if we don't, we're going to be left. We'll become a, by, a, a, a backwater. I mean, there's a, we, West Lafayette has to compete with places like Chicago, Indianapolis, as far as being attractive 
for uh, businesses to set down, families to set down, and, and jobs to be created. So we're not competing with Crawfordsville or Frankfurt. We're competing on a much larger scale. Uh, we're competing with Champaign, with Ann Arbor, with Madison. I mean, all these, these big uh, concentrations of, of university talent, uh, that's who we're competing with. And we're falling behind. We're falling behind right now. And uh, simple things like, uh, and, and even that technology is fastly uh, going away, but a, a Wi-Fi hotspot, you know. Lafayette has two. We have none. Why isn't the village already a, a, a Wi-Fi hotspot? It should have been done long ago. I mean, right, it's a village is right abutting a, a high-technology university. And uh, that's a simple thing to do. It doesn't cost that much money. I like to make the whole, the whole city a hotspot, but that might be a little bit bigger effort. We need, um, we need to bring in the, uh, a, a more technology as far as um, uh, internet capability, you know, using the cloud. And, and to do that, you need to download and upload speeds that we don't have yet to premise. Uh, we have some local companies that, that do that for us, and, uh, and that's a good start. But we need a much more broad, broad scale application of that. So we need to get the city moving forward. And it takes vision. You, you, got, you, you don't wait till those things happen. You got to be thinking about these things well in advance. And you got to see what's going on uh, around, around the United States because you're competing with those people. And you got to make sure you're, you're staying with, with them, uh, staying with them and hopefully ahead of them. And, uh, are there any other specifics you, you think you can do for uh, there's, there's little things. Uh, I, I think uh, uh, this is a, a, it's a small thing, but to me it's symbolic of uh, what the city needs to do about incorporating all of its citizens, harnessing them with the idea, the vision we have for the, for the town. Um, I was up in Prophets, uh, Prophets Ridge. It's a, a small development north of town that was annexed back in 06 or 05. Uh, and I was talking to, young, to a young father, his little daughter there, and he's a, a self-employed person. And uh, we were talking about a lot of things. And he said, don't get me wrong. I like being, in West, being part of West Lafayette, but we're not. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we get the city services. We get trash pickup. We have fire protection. But we can't get there. He said, if I want to go to the city of West Lafayette, i got to walk down Soldiers Home Road. All those curves are saying, it's dangerous. I don't, I'm not going to take my, my children out there on that road. And I got to thinking, all those miles of trails that West Lafayette likes to talk about, there's no trail going to Prophets, uh, Prophets Ridge. So <laughs> that's another immediate project. I'd like to see that, that, uh, that connection, a physical, symbolic connection of uh, the city, if you will, the Navajo, the city, connected to both Prophets Ridge and Lauren Lakes. It's about time, and, and it, it shouldn't be that expensive to do, I wouldn't think. Uh, I had to get into looking at how to do it, but for crying out loud, it's been, what, five, six years since we've indexed those two subdivisions, and they just stick out there. Um, that's something, but that, those are kind of things that, that convey the message that I want the city to work as a team, think as a team, work, and move forward uh, as an entity, and uh, make those partnerships are important. Partnership with Purdue, I don't want to see it proceed as a bedroom community. We're not. We should be an equal co-partner with Purdue. Uh, we're just as big as they are, as far as population goes, and uh, there's no reason why we can't be much more of a co-equal than, than a, a, a sibling, or not a sibling, but a, uh, a child, <laughs> if you will, with big brother and, 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 a, and a little brother uh, aspect. Uh, partnerships with our neighborhoods. Make the, the city I don't think is, is as plugged into our neighborhoods as they, as they, they want to be or should be. Um, we, have, we have some really active neighborhood associations, but I don't think they're really, really tied into the city administration that they could be. Uh, once again, it takes a very proactive, get your hands down there and working with, uh, with, the, uh, with the cities, with the uh, neighborhoods. And then, the, then a partnership with developers. I mean, once again, they're a fact of life. Private enterprise is what drives the United States and drives our economy. So we need to work with developers as, as once again, co-equal. We'll say, okay, how can we make these projects work? Uh, that, as they come up with these development ideas, how can we make them work within my premise of trying to protect and enhance neighborhoods, basically, is my biggest premise. So those are kind of things that, um, that I think we just need to, to, to just keep focusing on. Uh, and that's, that's also the challenges of the first four years uh, make those things happen, and then you know the the small things, the small steps that will demonstrate that 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 focus. 
that direction. My final question, you know, when someone goes in the, um, you know, voting booth next week, uh, you know, compared to you and your opponent, why are you the, the best candidate to select? Well, as I said, I, I, I think that it's my style of leadership is what's going to make, make these things happen. The current administration's had four years, and they haven't happened. We don't have that forward thinking. We don't have that thinking outside the box. What can we do to make sure we keep our place uh, within a Big Ten University community, you know, so we can look like Champaign or like Madison. In addition, like I said, I think we need to be competing with Chicago and Indianapolis. I mean, obviously, we run out the big city, the big city aspects, but the things of attracting jobs and, and businesses, we're competing with them. And uh, we need to be thinking along those lines, and I don't think we're not doing it. And you can look at things as simply as a, as a hot spot, as a good good concrete example of that happening. So I think that's the big difference. If, you know, we need a more active leadership style. We need the vision that, that has accompanied the previous administrations. All the things that we have today basically go back to the marjoram, marjoram years, you know, the trail system, uh, research park, all these things were, were, were a result of the Democratic administration that went before. And uh, I, I think that, that we want to return to that, and I'm the person to do it. Uh, not really. I, uh, it's been a real challenging, uh, um, and the fact that it's, it's the campaigning style. I mean, I've been very, very active campaigning. I've been walking the streets since June. I've been through the city. I'm on my, completing my second pass. And uh, I haven't seen my opponent out very much at all, if at all. Uh, of course, he's, he's covered, governing the city, and I'm also retired. But that's a kind of, I think that's necessary. And I plan on having those kind of activities going on even when I'm elected. Uh, how about some town hall meetings on occasion? You know, let people come in and then sit around and talk about these issues. Uh, engage them in, in the process. I think the citizen-driven nature of, of governance is the way to do it. That's why we have a common council representing their districts and uh, we, they should be, uh, their activities should be uh, promoted and respected, and uh, I'm not quite sure that's always happening.